Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show. The Rock and Review is so honored to have on half of the best-selling rock and roll duo in history and a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, John Oates. John, thanks for coming on the show. Eric, you know, it's always a pleasure, man. We've had some good times together. <laughs> always, and hopefully more in the future, particularly when things get back to normal. But yeah, I, I got to bring this up to you. You've got, you've got Oates Song Fest, 7908, yep. that you and your wife are launching, and it's coming up March 20th, 8 p.m. Eastern, I believe. Tell That's me about right. this. Ten years ago in Aspen, Colorado, uh, right, right as we were moving to Nashville, um, I put on this show there called the Aspen Songwriters Festival. And we, uh, we named it 7908 because that's the altitude of Aspen, 7,908 feet above sea level. Uh, and um, we had a wonderful time. We had some amazing artists. We had, you know, Sam Bush was out there. Uh, you know, we had Alan Toussaint, Keb Moe, Sean Colvin, Matt Nathanson, Donovan Frankenwriter. You know, a lot of Nashville folks were out there, um, great songwriters, uh, all sorts of people. Anyway. Um, we wanted to revive it in Colorado live. And, and over the summer, we were out there talking to some of the folks at the theater. And, and it looked like, yeah, man, in March, we'll be able to do a live show. And as we got closer and closer, we realized that wasn't going to happen. Um, so, you know, we talked about it. We said, you know, we, we've kind of got our juices flowing for this idea. Uh, and um, we said, let's uh, do a virtual show. We thought, you know, maybe, you know, with what's going on in the world and the, the food insecurity, the problem with that families are having feeding themselves in America. I just uh, I felt like I wanted to do more and I wanted to figure out how to do it. The project just really started taking on a life of its own. It got bigger and bigger. And we we brought in some amazing partners, which was a, a company called Drive Entertainment out of New York. Uh, actually, uh, some folks that I used to work with MTV going back that far. And then Nugs.tv is a streaming service who is going to be our streaming partners. And, um, you know, between that and feedingamerica.org as our, our designated charity, the, the, it really, uh, it began to be a bigger, a bigger project than we thought. Um, amazing artists signed on. And like I said, there's, I can drop names all, all day if you want. Well, well, let me help you with that. Please. Go ahead. Well, you know, Go right so ahead. You don't have to do it all, John. It's better. It's like, way you know, better you if, you do, if you drop such as Dave Grohl, yep. uh, Sandy Hagar. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're bringing in Mike Wolf from American Pickers. Um, you know, and like you said, you know, some of the, I think some of the new ones you've added, which, you know, you're going to have to expand the length of this uh, concert and show, John. You've got Dan and Shay on now. You've got Big yeah. Kenny. Yeah, it's like you're really, you know, it, it, to me, I thought, you know, reading it and, and getting uh, ready for the show with you to where you've got such a nice slice of, you know, the, the Colorado contacts that you've had for years living there. But also you've become such an integral part of Nashville. And yeah. so you've got your Nashville fan. You've got Jim Lauderdale. You know, I, 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 mean, I, I couldn't I couldn't do a show without Jim Lauderdale. <laughs> he, he uh, you know. <laughs> He and I bonded early on when I first moved to Nashville and just said, uh, you know, he's he's the consummate uh, songwriter and uh, just a great guy. But, yeah, you're right. We 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 what we try to do is we try to have a lot of diversity, uh, not only in, uh, you know, in styles of music, but from people from all over the country. You know, we've got uh, we've got this great young uh, group from New York called Infinity Song. We've got this amazing group from Franklin called Lewis York, who are doing incredible stuff. Um, so we've got some people that might not be on the radar, like a Dave Grohl or a Daryl Hall or something like that, but every artist is so good and the performances they're turning in are fantastic. We have Gavin DeGraw, um, oh, yeah. oh man, Sarah Bareilles, who's one of a huge right. favorite of mine, Sean Colvin, who was also at the Aspen show 10 years ago. So yeah, we really try to, you know, we got everything from singer songwriters to rock bands, to, to R and B, to folk, um, you name it. We, you know, we got it. Well, and I think it's so incredible too, particularly in this time that you and Amy are doing this, John, to where, you know, there are 50 million people in the United States who are being challenged to, uh, to have food and for you guys and all of the, uh, the great uh, musicians and bands donating their time, to this effort to help that across our nation. Well, you know, we during this pandemic and you know being home really for the first time in my entire professional career for any length of time, um, I I started to uh, you know I, of course as we all probably did started watching the news on a regular basis, um, and uh, you know I just felt 
I felt a little helpless just sitting in the house. And I thought, I really, Amy and I said, we got to do more. You know, we had been contributing to various charities personally, but I thought there was something more we could do, make a bigger statement, create more awareness. And in, in, at first, I think, you know, the goal was to create the awareness. Because as you said, the numbers are staggering and there's heartbreaking that, you know, and one of the things that struck me was that, you know, I walk into supermarkets here in Nashville, wherever, there's food on the shelves, there's food on the shelves. And I, I said, th th there should never be anyone in, in, the, in this country who needs food. Somehow or another, they should be able to get food. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and that's what really bothered me. And that's what really, I think, propelled this thing. Um, and the, the other thing we start when we started the project, we said, the only way to make this happen and the only way to make sure that everybody was felt good about what they were doing from the artist's point of view and, and the audience was to make it totally free. And it is absolutely free. This is not a pay-per-view show. You don't have to pay to watch this. It is absolutely free. And there'll be a donate donation component. There'll be a QR code and a URL so you can tap on it. And um, we we just want people to enjoy the music, enjoy the great messages that are going to be put put across. And hopefully, if they're moved enough and they have the wherewithal and they can uh, help donate. And Feeding America is such a, a fantastic, uh, well-run charity. And the food, the money really goes to the people who need it. It's not what you know. It's not one of these things where. The money is absorbed by the administrative costs, which happens, you know, unfortunately, in a lot of charities. So um, it was very, you know, we thought it out. We, it was very well thought out. And we we really wanted to make it an event that uh, musicians could be proud of and and that the audience will hopefully really uh, dig. I understand you might have some music involved in a <laughs> film called Gringa. What's up with this? <laughs> well, boy, you did your homework, uh, Eric. I, I like it. <laughs> Yeah, um, during here again, during the pandemic, you know, I started writing again. Um, I guess, you know, I was home, I figured I'll start writing some songs. And um, a good friend of mine from Colorado uh, reached out to me, uh, a, a director who I who we were, we were friends, we had never worked together. And he told me about an indie film that he was doing called Gringa. And it's the story of a young girl from Southern California who had Due to unfortunate circumstances, uh, her mother passed or dies in a car accident and her father had left and checked out years before and lives in Mexico and she didn't know him. Um, and she decides she has nowhere to go, no place to live. And she decides that with a backpack, she's going to go to Mexico and find her father. And when she gets there, she finds him and it's not exactly what she expected or hoped for. And he's a kind of a surf bum and a drunk and uh, lives on the beach and and. Um, in the greatest of all Hollywood traditions, uh, it turns out pretty good in the end. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Now, when does but, uh, this come out? You you put music with this. Well, what happened was he he told me about the movie. He sent me a few clips, and I thought, wow, what a cool thing! And I said, you know, this is really great to be inspired. Let me write with a direction in mind, mm -hmm. and I came up with a song, um, and I gave it to him, and he said, he and his wife that said, this is this is the movie. This is perfect. And I was like, oh. Well, great. He goes, you want to do more? I said, sure. So Amy, uh, my wife actually found a hip hop artist in South Carolina. She found him on Instagram and she thought he was really cool. He was doing these cool ideas and we connected with him through Instagram and we didn't ended up collaborating on an amazing song. And I'll tell you a really quick story of how th this, this project seems like it was meant to be. Um, the song is called DND, Do Not Disturb. And it's, you know, it's not what I expected to, to be in this movie. It's not a, the song is kind of hip hop. It's kind of rappy. It's different, you know? Um, yeah. And we did it right. And um, I called the director. And I said, look, I've got this new song I did with this guy, young guy. And I said, I don't know if it's right or not, but you know, it's cool. So I'm going to send it to you. So I sent it to him and he sends me back a clip. And this is the honest truth, the God's honest truth sends me back a clip of the young girl after her mother dies. She wakes up in this condo by herself and her t-shirt says D and D. Oh and God. I never, I never saw the clip, did not know anything about it on it, honestly. And he said, did you, I said, I had no idea. He goes, this is amazing. He goes, do more. So I started doing more. So we wrote a song with Daphne Willis, who's a Nash, ex Nashville gal, lives in LA now. So we've got about three or four songs in the movie, and um, it'll be coming out hopefully in the spring or early summer. 
Well, I've got to bring this up too. I'm not gonna let you off the hook, John. You are an award-winning songwriter. So I've got to ask you during this time, while you've been writing songs, besides, you know, scoring films and such as that, have you been working on any more songs for your solo work and for Hollow Notes? I'm just working on songs all the time. <laughs> uh, you know, I just wrote a song with Big Kenny. Uh, he and I are neighbors uh, here here in the West End of Nashville, and um, we uh, we've been we've been pals for a while, and uh, I, I love him, man. He's got the best spirit ever. Uh, and uh, he and I wrote a song together. You know, we had been threatening to do it for a while. We finally got around to it. It's pretty cool. So I'd love to record that. Um, and I just did a and I on another completely other side. Uh, I'm co-hosting the song festival with a with a dude named Sack Squatch. Now, if you've if you you gotta check Sax Squatch yeah. out, he's yeah. a um, sax playing sa Sasquatch who lives in the woods. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and he and I did an EDM, an electronic dance uh, version of Man Eater. Oh and my we're gonna, gosh! We're gonna debut that on the uh, on the Song Festival as well. So, How are you staying that hip? It's it's almost like you know we we joked about like the Instagram and stuff to where like you know, like your mustache has its own Instagram and things like this. It's like, you, it's like you keep it reinventing yourself, John. I'm, you I'm, not, I'm, I'm not doing it. I just hang around with young people. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. So many great things going on. Well, I want to make sure that our viewers uh, know where they need to go for our Oats Song Fest 7908. It's coming March 20th, 8 yep. p.m. Eastern time. Where do they need to go, John, to watch it? and to enjoy the, the performances and also to donate. Nugs.tv will be the streaming platform. And from there, they'll take you wherever you want to go. Um, and uh, on the screen will be a QR code that you can check out with your cell phone, or there'll be a URL uh, link that you can hit and it will take you to Feeding America where you can donate in any number of ways. So uh, we're going to make it as, as easy as possible. And one thing I know, it's a long show. We're almost up to three hours of music. And we have some amazing days ago still coming on board. So uh, it's, it's really taken out, like I said, a life of its own. I guarantee you there's going to be great music and, and it'll be very entertaining show. So um, I just hope people enjoy it and sit back on a Saturday night and listen to some amazing artists do what they do. Well, John, I, I know that anytime you are involved, that uh, great musicians and great music tend to follow. So okay. I certainly hope that our viewers do tune into this. It's a, it's a great cause, Feeding America, Oats Song Fest 7908. Uh, John Oates, thank you so much for joining the Rock Interview. And I can't personally wait to see the show live also. Thanks, man. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.